Hello. How are you guys doing? I'm at the gas station. I just got this water. My hat is like pulled down really far on my head. I don't know what this woman is like staring me a hole, staring a hole through me out. Hey. <laughs> Take a picture. It lasts longer. <laughs> oh my god. I have had an interesting day today. <laughs> it's been a good day, but like just an interesting day. I um God, it like feels like it's like a really long. Do you ever have long days or just like seem like they're forever long? I'm, like trying to think about I wanted to go the other way, actually. Well, I'll go down here, and then I'll turn back around. Um, I'm trying to think of, how, like, how my day started. <laughs> Let me go back in my day real quick. Um, oh, yeah. So, I got up and took the dogs out, gave PP his medicine, and then I went and got coffee. And then I went into my office, but I was only there for, like, an hour. I just really didn't feel like working on my book at all today. Um... And then I just kind of worked on one story that I'm working on for my um, book, of, book of stories about my life. And then I uh, came, no, I ran some errands and then I came home and I just was like real lethargic, like all day today. Like, I don't, I don't know why. I just, I got a good amount of sleep last night. I just was really tired and, um, I didn't even take a nap today, no, when I usually take a nap. Ta oh, Tanya called me and she was like, do you wanna go get a foot massage? We always go, like, you guys, those foot massages that you get where they put your foot in that bucket and then they like give you like shoulder massages and head massages and everything all over your clothes. <laughs> they, it's like you're in your clothes. So it's like a massage, but you're in your clothes. We love them. So anyway, they're like 30 bucks or something like that. But anyway, um, so I started filming my videos and my internet was like messed up. I don't know what is going on. So I'm gonna say it so maybe somebody knows what's going on with my computer, the uploading. It's really weird, like, so usually for like, let's say if it's a 15 minute video, it usually takes me 15 or 20 minutes to upload it. Well recently what's been happening is, it'll say it's gonna take like two and a half to three hours to upload it. And then, like, once it goes down below two hours, it goes, like, from two hours to, like, 14 minutes. So it's not really two, two and a half hours, but it still takes, like, 40 minutes to upload a video. And I never know how long it's going to take. So it's just, it's super frustrating. And um, I filmed this video that I'm actually putting up tomorrow. So when you're watching this, my drama video for that day. And, like... Like, when I was watching it back, like, halfway through... <sighs> okay, so they came out, and they were, like, working on our, like, roof today and on the decks, and they were, like, blowing, like, the leaves off of the gutters and things like that. Well, you could really hear it at, like, one part of the video, like, to the point where it was really distracting. So I had to, like, cut a part of the video out, but I didn't even see it until I was over at Tanya's house. And so then I, like, was ready to upload it. I was, like, waiting for her to get ready to go to the massages, but, like, I was going to upload it at her house just assuming that everything was okay. Okay, but it wasn't so I didn't have a video to make and so then I like went home and um, or then I went to the massage and then I came Tony wanted me to take her to get a fountain coke so I took her to get a fountain coke and then I came home and I like re-edited that video and started rendering it again because I had to render the whole video all over again and after editing it but, like, at that point, like, so many people had contacted me about what I made my video about tonight that I was like, should I do this video? Like, and I thought I was really, like, it, it, I don't talk much about, like, my process of, like, how I make a drama video. So, I'll explain that in just a second. But, and then I was kind of like, yeah, I think this is a video that I want to make. Like, even, I don't know how it's going to be received, but I think that I have a message that I want to say in this. And so... I filmed a video real quick. It took me like 10 or 15 minutes to make and then I uploaded it and I got it uploaded. But it didn't go up until 11 o'clock at night and then I realized I had never uploaded my booktube video 
So I only uploaded my Peterisms video and my vlog and then my uh, main channel video didn't even go up till 11 p.m. So I was frustrated because I was like, I worked all day on these videos to get them up late. And what's frustrating about it is that the later I post them, a lot of times you guys don't see them and then they like get pushed through subscriptions till the next day and I mean, I make the videos because I want you guys to watch them, you know, like obviously. So anyway, the positive out of that is that tomorrow I already have a video for my drama channel made and I have a video for my booktube channel made and I'm doing my vlog right now. And then um, I have, I already have it figured out what Peterism's video I'm gonna do because I'm gonna take it from a comment that somebody left on a video that I think is pertinent. And um, so yeah, so I just have to film that video. And then I get to kind of relax and then we're going out to dinner tomorrow night for Melissa's birthday. We're going out with Melissa and Jason, Aaron and her husband Eric and Alex and I. And I have no idea what time or where we're going or anything yet. Melissa said she would call me tomorrow. So her birthday was yesterday. And for her birthday, I think I said this last night, she rode around the track going 500 miles an hour with Mario Andretti. Or did she go around the 500 track? 500 miles an hour is too fast, isn't it? She went around the track, I don't know, 180 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, however fast a race car truck goes. And that was stupid, I said 500 miles an hour. Do they go that fast? I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't think so. Like, that's super fast, isn't it? I don't know anything about cars. I don't know anything about car races. I don't know anything about it. <sighs> but like, oh, here's like my process when I do like a, like a drama video. Because like a lot of people always want to know like, well, how do you decide what content you're going to do? And I honestly think that like a lot of people think... Because I, I get this comment a lot, so I'm just assuming that. That people assume that like... And I can't speak about other drama channels, but I can only speak about myself. Like, uh, we only make videos about stuff that is going to get views, which is not the case. Um, I can kind of tell before I post a video how well I think it's going to do, like how many people are going to watch it and stuff. And um, like yesterday, I did the video on the dr uh, online drag races exposed. And I knew it wasn't going to get a lot of views because the last time that I did it, it didn't get a lot of views. But so many of the kids that were involved in the drag races were so happy that they got some exposure. You know, these are YouTubers that are really putting out what I consider some like high quality content or even if it's low quality, it's still like they're really putting out like really thought Full, thoughtful video series content whatever you want to call it I think that word content's crap but they're really putting out some like thought provoking you know they're really trying to make a show and I think they deserve some attention for that and I think for all of those people out there that don't have a way to express their artistic you know form or drag or whatever I wanted to make the video for that I knew it wasn't going to get a lot of views and I didn't really care I just knew that the people that really like me and the people that are interested in that topic would watch it and so I was excited about it. That's a video like I love to make, right? So that would be like, there are certain videos that I feel really compelled to make. And um, so today's my video was about Jaclyn Hill's divorce, but it really wasn't about her divorce. And I think that this is kind of the direction that probably my drama will go into a little bit is where I think I'm gonna present the story, but then apply it to my own life, like what I've learned from that, if that makes sense. Um, or share a personal story with myself. I th I think that's what I want to do with the drama channel from now on. Instead of just, you know, there's enough channels that do receipts and do you think this and do you think that? And it's just, sometimes it's a lot, you know? Like, I don't know, even like looking at the story sometimes, I either, I either feel like I don't know, like, the, the story behind it or, like for example, when I did the Isabel Bedoya story, like, and that whoever the other, I don't know who those people were, but anyway, I did that story, and I did it because, like, everybody was doing it, and so when I started looking into it, it kind of interested me. This is about the, the girl that, oh, there's an opossum right in the middle of the road. You guys want to see this? This is hilarious. Let me see it. I don't know if you can see it. It's so slowly crawling into the, this is what railroad tracks. But anyway, um, woo! front and center. 
what interested me about the story, honestly, were, and what saddened me about the story, Eden the doll and that Isabel Bedoya, that's who it was, were that they were all just so callous about it. You know, this this woman is married and has a child, and she's like, and they're all just fighting and calling up people and wanting to get receipts, and it's like, this is sad. Like, and that is not even, like, the direction that I took the video, but I probably should have, because I just thought, like, this is sad. Like, these are grown adults with, like, family and friends and people they care about, and... And I understand, like, when you're cheated on, how bad that hurts and all that kind of stuff. That's happened to me in a past relationship. But, you know, like, I don't know. There's something about, like, airing your dirty laundry like that. And so, I mean, I really kind of think through a whole lot of video. And I also think a lot about how I think it's going to be perceived by people. Like, if I make this video and I say these things... How are people going to respond to it? Because if I come across and I'm real cutthroat, I mean, like, you know, I mean, it's all about being teach, being remaining teachable for me. And like, maybe my opinion, I need to take a, a look at it. And so a lot of times I read like comments on Twitter and threads to see what other people have to say about a topic that's going on. And a lot of times I'm like, yeah, like I really had never thought of it that way. And so for me, you know, I try to kind of stay somewhat educational with the whole social media thing. I really honestly do. So I usually go in to the videos with one or of two things in mind. A, honestly, like, I feel like there's some lesson to be found in it. And not because I'm, you know, fucking Oprah or something like that. Just because based on my personal experience, I'm like, oh, I relate to this. Like, so let me share something I've learned by my own, you know, mistakes or something that I've lived through. Or it's just a total shits and giggles video that I think is hilarious. You know, most of my reviews of palettes are shits and giggles videos. My hauls that I started doing, I love doing those. I think they're so much fun because I do them on BookTube all the time, book hauls, you know? That water tastes so good. So that's kind of how I decide what I'm going to do a video about. Like, I mean, in all honesty, like the Glitter Forever 17 videos are for fun. Like that, and because I know she can handle it, because she's kind of like, she responds to every video I make. And I know she, this is what I love about Glitter, okay, Breland, is that I get her gig, even though it confuses the hell out of me and I don't know why she's doing it, but I understand that that's her gig and I respect it. I don't agree with it, but I respect it, okay? If that makes sense. Like, I don't have to respect her to respect that that's what she chooses to do with her life, if that makes sense. I think if you're not hurting anybody, you have a right to do with you what you want to do with your life, okay? I don't agree with it. I, I think you might want to make some better choices, but hey, as long as you're not hurting anybody and you're not hurting any creatures out there, that's your business. But, you know, I respect her gig. She respects my gig. And, like, she knows what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And so, like, they're... In a weird way, like, out of all of the people I've talked about, you'd think she's the one person that wouldn't get it, but, like, she really does. Like, she really gets, you know, YouTube. And, um, I think she kind of gets a kick out of the drama videos, actually. Not just mine, but all of them. Are you ever just so thirsty you could just drink so much water? Because, you know, a lot of times I don't want to, like dissect. I mean, I'm, I'm never going to sit there, you guys, on a drama video and be like, I did deep investigations and I've been researching this case for weeks. Okay, listen. Okay, drama channels are not reporting journalists. We're just not. We don't have a code of ethics of journalists. We don't have any of that kind of stuff. So that's just crap. Like, that's not who we are. We're drama channels. We're YouTubers that have an opinion about a situation that's going on. And we might have receipts, which is factual evidence sometimes. Sometimes it's doctored. I never have. Um, based on social media. So what is that? You know what I mean? Like, when you really break it down, it's rather ridiculous. And that's part of why I love doing it, because it just cracks my shit up so much. You know, it's like, some of these drama channels are like, well, I have the receipts on this, and dun, 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 dun. I'm just like, oh my God, you take yourself way too seriously, okay? We're opinion channels. It's just really not that deep. It's just, we, we, we have an opinion. It's like we're sitting around talking to our friends about something that happened on social media. It's just not that deep. You know what I mean?
I mean? What's interesting to me a lot of times is, I don't know, I don't know. What's interesting to me a lot of times is how those drama channels get their audience to buy into this whole idea that they're doing deep investigations. It's like, deep investigations into what? A tweet that somebody deleted? <laughs> like, okay. Watergate. You know what I mean? Like, it's just give me a break. Like, just know who you are in the world. You know what I mean? I know I'm a fucking opinion channel. It's just not that deep, okay? I like to make people laugh. I like to have fun. I like to maybe pass on a little wisdom that I've learned in my life. It's just not that deep. And it's not that hard to be compassionate towards other people and be emp empathetic either, you know? And not put negativity out there in the world. That's like why when people come to me and they're like, your channel is just all negative and you drag, I'm like, no, I really don't. Like, you obviously aren't watching my videos because I watch every video that I make back and I really don't do that and I know that. I know that for a fact. So, no, I really don't. And, you know, recently it was like somebody, I saw somebody like compared us to like tabloids and I was thinking about that and I was like, well, we really are kind of like tabloids, but to be honest with you, we're not really even as bad as tabloids. I mean, tabloids will put right across, you know, the front thing. Brad and Angelina fight for custody of the kids. None of the kids want to live with him. You know, like, we, if we did that, if I put that in a video, people would come for me. You know? They put, you know, <sighs> Kirstie Alley, fattest she's ever been. You know, if I said that, oh my God. Oh my God. Drama channel shame, body shames the world. All the social justice warriors would come for me, you know? So, like, it's no different than Star Magazine or, you know, In Touch Magazine, all those magazines. The difference is we tone it down. We really do. And in there, they say, an insider said, you know, <laughs> a Kardashian insider. Well, that's basically translated receipts. It, there's no difference. And so when people say that drama channels are dying, no, they're not dying. They're going to be around for quite some time. Pick your flavor. Pick who you like based on their personality because basically we all do the same thing. We just have a different personality and a different message. We're going to be around for a while because as the world moves away from magazines and paper and television and it goes to YouTube and streaming television, you, drama channels are going to be around. And I really think it's going to be, you're going to see more syndicated stuff like this. I mean, like Keemstar and Philip DeFranco, like they're on like a much higher level, but like you're, I think we're going to see more shows like that, you know, talking about YouTube and YouTube, what goes on with YouTube and YouTube drama this and, you know, who wore it best at the Dreamies or whatever those awards are. It doesn't matter because I'll never be there. But you know what I mean? How did I ever get talking about this? Like, this is honestly not what I thought I was going to talk about tonight. I honestly was driving around today and, uh, I drove around all day today listening to the set, like a Swedish House Mafia set at Miami Ultra this year when they closed. And um, you know, it was a religious experience listening to that in my car today. I was like, I was telling Alex, I was like, I had an Alex moment. He was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I was bawling my eyes out in the car listening to Swedish House Mafia. Like, dancing, but, like, bawling at the same time, you know? And he goes, well, what was making you, like, cry or get emotional? And I was like, I don't really even know. I said I wasn't sad. I was just kind of full of emotion. I don't even know how to explain it, you know? And um, I've been talking for almost 20 minutes already. Oh, my God. And he was like, well, what song did it for you? And I was like, well, don't worry, child, because I love that. It's like my favorite. It's like one of my favorite EDM songs ever. But this Steve Angelo song that's called Remember and uh, it was weird like where my mind was going today as I was like listening to it it was like 
it just talks about like, you know, do you remember when you first fell in love and then you fell apart and then you had a dream and then all, you chased your dream and all this kind of stuff. But at Ultra when they showed it, and I think this is why I got so emotional there. I mean, first of all, you all know that I get emotional about anything, right? I mean, I can watch a commercial on TV and get emotional. And I'm thankful for that. Because there was a day that I couldn't shed a tear to save my life. And I'm just, you know, I don't always just, like, there are days that I'm completely fine and I can watch some really emotional, you know, movie or commercial and I don't shed a tear at all. But there are other days, like today, that I just was like, okay, this, what is going on with you? But... At Ultra, they played these really cool videos when that song came up, and it's exactly at 31 minutes. Um, if you go to the Ultra, it's on SoundCloud if you guys want to see it. If you guys want me to link it below, I'll, let me know, and I'll put it on there tomorrow. But um, you can also watch it on YouTube. They have the whole set at YouTube on YouTube. But I, uh, and you can see the videos then too, but it's kind of hard to see it. Alex was watching it in bed tonight because he actually went like and got a Red Bull while they had just started that song. But when I was sitting there and I was watching it, it was these videos that they had of like when they got together and like when they were, like they just started and when they were touring and then like the more popular they got and then it showed them, like, their last show together. And if you guys don't know, Swedish House Mafia is a, um, it's an EDM group, like, three DJs, electronic dance music, and, uh, it's Axwell and Grosso and Steve Angelo. And they used to be all three of them together. Now, Steve Angelo's on his own, and Axwell and Grosso are together. And, um, you know, like, watching that and having, like, watched their career, like, all of those years... And I'm not getting any younger, you know? And they're like almost my age. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching it, you know? And it's like, it's the 20th anniversary of Ultra and I'm like there and I'm like listening to this. And I'm like, you know what? Like it has taken me almost 20 years to get back to myself is how I felt. And, um, I, mean, I was in two relationships that really were not healthy for my life. Not physically or emotionally abusive. Or, well, I don't know that they weren't emotionally abusive, but not physically abusive, but they just weren't great for me, you know? And um, I was thinking a lot today about, like, my friend Krissa and... Uh, She was, like, my best friend from, like, 19 to, like, 23, 24, 25. Because we lived together for a while. But not not while I was in graduate school. What was it when I was in graduate school? And um, she's the one that I, we met Courtney Love and Drew Barrymore together at the patio and we lived together and after the first night of meeting her, she moved into my apartment. And we were best friends, you know, for years. She and my first boyfriend and I, we all lived together, you know, in this apartment. And the one I drove you guys by the other day, we like all lived together and that was after I got sober, you know, and she had a job and was in school and... I was working and we would come home and watch a movie and go work out together or go to the, we would all go to the pool and go swimming late at night, the three of us, after we all got off work and it was fun and I can remember like on the weekends, you know, like getting ready and like planning on going out and, uh, you know, we all, none of us work Sunday, so we would always go out on Saturday nights and I can remember the three of us there like getting ready to go out and stuff, you know, and blasting the music, and I can remember, you know, through the week, like, sitting out on the patio, like, in the fall, and reading, like, just really great books, and, uh, making, like, big pots of coffee, you know, like, I don't ever do that anymore, I don't make a pot of coffee anymore, and, uh, lit all the time and just real kind of an artsy life and I don't know like what makes me 
sad about that. Like, I honestly, like, I wouldn't want to go back to that, but, like, what I, I think I realize is, and this is what really makes me sad, is that, you know, like, that was a really great period of my life. I mean, I was writing all the time, even though, like, it wasn't ever, I wasn't writing to, like, publish. I just was writing because I love to write, you know? And am I almost done with this? Is it almost at third? I've got five minutes left. Um, I don't know. I just felt so connected to, like, everything that made me happy. And so when I was driving around today and I was listening, you know, to the song, it just was making me think about those years. And I, I don't, I don't, I do not even know why, like, what sparked it. Because I don't often think about, like, that period of my life, you know? Um, not because anything bad happened or anything good happened. I just, because I just don't, I, I don't know. I just don't. And, um, I mean like that boyfriend and I, like he and I are on pretty good terms. Like I don't ever see him, but like if I did, it would be completely simple. He lives in Florida. So, but like, you know, I mean, when my aunt passed away, he reached out to me, you know, and said, Hey, I'm really sorry to hear about your aunt. And he came to my mom's funeral. I mean, we're fine. You know, it's like, it's been fucking 20 years since we broke up, you know, but like, I've had a lot of really good times since then. But to some degree, I feel like I kind of sold out a little bit. Like, I just think I kind of, like, until, let's say, like, the last five or six years, like, I really kind of, like, sold out. And, like, my husband is such a huge reason for why I am who I am today. I remember, like, when we got together, like, we were sitting on the couch just one night, like, our condo looks completely different inside now than whenever we first moved in there. Like, it, the setup, the, the furniture, we've, like, gotten rid of all, everything and got all new stuff. And we were sitting there one night, we had, like, a fire going, and it was in the winter. And I said to him, like, we were sitting there, and I said, like, what's one thing that you love about me? <laughs> Did you ever have those conversations with your partner? And he, he kind of thought for a second, and he goes, you make me want to be a better person. I think what, and like, that statement alone, like, I mean, I, nobody has ever said anything to me like that. And you know, like, what I love about him today, and what he has given me is, he has challenged me to dig down deep in my core, in my soul, and find out who I really, really am and live my truest, happiest life. And he has allowed me to be exactly who I want to be and dance and be funny and flip fans and make videos and write books and, you know, sing songs. And, you know, I'm allowed to do all that. And he's allowed me to be that person that for so long I was so, like how my mom used to say, when I drive down the street, I have to turn my music down. And I would say, mom, why do you feel like, if that's why she could not wait to move off the street that I grew up on. She'd say, I'm, you know, like this Carmel housewife and I feel like, you know, I'm a suburbanite and I feel like I've sold out on who I am. And when I drive down the street, I have to turn down my music because I don't want to offend anybody. And I'd be like, mom, fuck them. But see, I lost that in myself for so long, that fuck them attitude, you know? And I don't mean that in a nasty, cruel way. What I mean is if you can't get with my gig, then get gone because it's my life. But I bought into the bullshit for a long time. I bought into the promotions and the this and the that, you know? To at 13 years walk away from a job that hadn't made me happy in a really long time. In a relationship, I was doing everything I possibly could to save for no reason whatsoever because I wasn't happy in it. To walk away from everything, to take a risk, to jump off a cliff, into a world that was unimaginable that I'm so happy with that realistically I had that state of mind 20 years ago you know so I was kind of sitting there driving today and I thought well hell I lost 20 years of my life I mean not really I didn't you know like I had some great times but you know what I mean like it took me 20 fucking years to find myself again and I'm happy that I did hell I'm happy that I did finally find myself I might never have found myself and that's why I want to pass it on to other people and say, you can too, you know? Okay, this is going to stop in three seconds, so I'll be back here after I... Anyway, I'm back. <laughs> I don't know what I'm rambling on about, Rambling Rose. 
I think I'm going to get off here and make this actually kind of a shorter vlog tonight because I want to um, finish my audiobook. Oh my god. I'm almost done with pudding. I have like an hour, hour and a half left. It is so good, you guys, by Julie Murphy. And then I'm going to start uh, I'll Be Gone in the Dark which is our book club choice of this month. And uh, yeah, so I'm real excited about that. There's like, it smells like an oil spill or like a tar pit. <laughs> tar pit, do we say that anymore? Um, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like where they make asphalt? My dad, to pay his way through college, um, paved roads in the summer. And whenever I would complain about something growing up as a kid, like if he would have me do yard work or something like that, which I mean, I never mowed the lawn. I told that story the other day, but like he would have me like, you know, pick weeds, which is a hundred times worse. And if I was complain, if I complained at all, he'd say, get behind an asphalt truck in 100 degree weather in upstate Indiana in August and then complain to me about it. <laughs> I would be like, okay, I'll shut my mouth. <laughs> That's what he did in the summers. And then in the, during the year, my dad, when he was at Indiana University in Bloomington for undergraduate school, he was a waiter at the DG house. <laughs> And my dad was a Fiji. And he actually dated, in college, this is kind of funny, an Olympic diver. I can't even remember what her name is. My mom used to tell the story all the time. And, uh, like, not out of jealousy. She just always kind of thought it was interesting. He dated this, like, Olympic diver. She was, like, super famous or something. And, uh... I don't know what happened to her, but anyway... Those were the days, my friend. My friend Krista today, she lives in Berlin. I don't see her. I don't ever talk to her. We used to talk about once a year. Well, you know how it is. You talk like every every six months, and then it's like once a year, and then you don't talk to him at all. And she's like, I mean, different, completely different world. I don't talk about this much on here, but I had followed the Grateful Dead when I was younger, like out of high school for a summer. And uh, Krista loved to hear the stories of me, you know, following the Grateful Dead and telling her about that. And so she would, she always wanted to do that. And so she, but she didn't like that kind of music. She liked like Rob Zombie and Rammstein and stuff like that. So she ended up following uh, the Warp Tour. And she went to like so many shows this one summer. Well, Chris is the kind of girl that if she wants to meet somebody, she's going to meet him. And she wanted to meet Rob Zombie. So she got backstage somehow and she met Rob Zombie. But while she was back there, she met this guy that was from Germany. And he is like, he has a band. His band is called, well, I'm not going to even say. But anyway. So anyway, it doesn't matter. It's not super famous. But I just don't need people in truth being intrusive to their uh, privacy. Because I don't know their story today. Because I haven't talked to her in forever. So anyway, she met this guy, and he does, like, a lot of the mixing for Rob Zombie and Rammstein, and, like, Krista hung out, like, that whole summer with, like, Rob Zombie's, like, wife, like, that moon, whatever her name is, and I think is gorgeous, and she's in all the movies, and they became, like, really close friends, and then, like, Krista, like, moved by them with this guy that she's married to now. I think his name's Rob or something. I don't know what his name is. It's something, actually, it's not Rob because it's something German. But anyway, and then, because, like, her, she's married now to him and, like, her name is, like, some long German name. And she, um... And then they ended up moving to Germany and he's, like, a music producer and she is, like, lives in some crazy, like, penthouse in Berlin and the last time that I talked to her, she was like, <laughs> Krista could very much fall to the negative. You know like how I always talk about positivity? Krista's somebody that fell to the negative constantly. And she's like, I just feel unfulfilled. Like I just am not, just not happy with her life. But that was like a year ago. That was like a year and a half, two years ago. And she's just like, I'm not happy with my life. I'm like, Krista, 
you're living in a penthouse in Berlin to a music producer. She's like, it's not as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> She's like, how are you? I'm like, I'm great. Like, I'm having a good time. You know, I go to meetings and I hang out with Tanya. We go to the Meyer. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's like, how do you measure happiness? I'm real happy with my life. I'm going to have to stop and get another bottle of water because I have gone right through this and it is so good. My mom used to always go to that Rosie's place right there. This little restaurant. I mean, look at this right here. Could you not just like... Is this not so... Look at this. Brick Street Hotel in Zinesville, Indiana. Is that not so cute? Look at that. This whole street is cute. This is where I want to live. Look at this right here. I was actually kind of surprised because I said to Alex, I said, would you ever like move to Zinesville? And he goes, oh yeah, I would love to move to Zinesville. And then I was talking to a friend of mine today and she's like, yeah, she's like, it's not like super diverse. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, like, I don't know that if you live like right in the city. I said, are you saying that they're not like really cool with gay people? She's like, I mean, it's still just very conservative. You know what's so weird about Indiana is this, is that like, I go other places, like honest to God, like Miami and you know, Chicago and Vegas and I, honest to God, like as a gay couple, and met with more discrimination than I met with in Indianapolis. Like we almost never, ever, or like encounter any kind of discrimination here. Like ever. It's really a safe place to live as a gay person. At least I have. That has been my experience. There's not much to do as a gay person here. I mean, there's not like a really hot like gay scene but you do see like a lot of gay families like you say a lot of like you know two men together with kids or two women together with kids and so I think like Indiana is known for being like a safe place as like um you know, a gay couple to raise families here. I don't know. Downtown is like, I will say downtown is like, where it's like more like artsy and metropolitan and they have like really cool like loft apartments and stuff and you know, old horse lofts and things like that that are turned into uh, apartments and whatever. Like there's a lot of gay people that live down there that are really successful, you know, like huge architects and doctors and things like that. And YouTubers, of course. Oh, YouTubers. <laughs> We're just not there yet because we, we haven't hit that kind of status yet. Where were we the other day? Alex and I were in some store. Oh, we were in Ikea. And there was, like, this gay couple. And they had, like, this son that was, like, six or something. They were, like, walking through. And the kid was being really rowdy. And the dad was like, if I have to tell you one more time, I'm going to have your dad take you out to the car. And I thought, I looked at Alex. I go, yep. I go, we're no different than anybody else, are we? <laughs> oh... That Ikea kind of wore me out. I wasn't ready for all that. Tani and I, <laughs> she's so funny. We were talking about it today. She's like, yeah, I wasn't real impressed with that Ikea. I was like, yeah, I wasn't either. I go, now, if I had $10,000 and somebody to push a car, where I could go, yeah, I want that and that and that and that and that. Because it's like the small stuff in Ikea that I thought was cool. But it was like none of the big stuff that I was super impressed with. I mean, the couches are nice and stuff like that. But they feel cheap. They don't feel like real super comfortable. I don't know. Maybe they are once you get them home. But they just, when we tried them out. <laughs> They didn't feel super cool when we tried them out. Basically, when I sat our asses down on them, it didn't feel real comfortable. But I just wasn't real impressed with it. But then there was like, you know, they would have like a bathroom trash can that was like $15. And I'd be like, oh my God, that's fantastic. You can't even get that, you know, up in the Walmart. Or a mirror. You know, like they had mirrors that were like huge mirrors that were super cheap. And I was like, this is unbelievable. But I think the thing about Ikea is, like, if you're going to do it, like, don't ever order it and pay for shipping and handling. Like, you have to go there and buy it. Because one time I was going to order, like, two office chairs. 
and they're like slide, you know, like the sliding office chairs. And the chairs were like $39. And so it would have been like what, you know, like $80 total plus tax. And it came to like 200 and something with shipping and handling. It was like ridiculous. I was like, no. And I ended up just going to Target and buying two really cheap like plastic chairs, which I still have. And they were like $15 each. I'm a clearance queen. I wonder where we'll go for Melissa's dinner tomorrow night. She kind of loves fondue. So I have a feeling we may be doing fondue tomorrow night, which fondue in hot weather is, I don't know. I love fondue, but I haven't, I actually haven't had it in a long time. We'll have fun no matter where we go. Oh, the yellow light is on. And I am going to, oh, it's not my yellow light this time, it's the battery. But I am going to get off here and listen to, pardon. <laughs> my friend when I was growing up, she used to always like this part right here of your arm, she would like pull it, she'd go, pardon. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea. She like, she, she'd go pull out your arm, or put out your arm, and I put out my arm and she'd go, pardon. <laughs> Oh, why? I, like, totally forgot about that. They also had a, ha a hat. They also had a cat that they, like, continued to add names to. I think I may have said this not too long ago in here. But at one point, I could remember every name that the cat had. So let me see if I can remember it, okay? It was, like, Ty, T-H-A-I, Ty Capernaus, wait... Ty Copernicus, Ty Copernicus, Ouija board breakfast, Chernobyl reaction, Griswold McNuggets, to Billy Groats, to Billy Goat Scruff. Ty Copernicus, Ouija board breakfast, Chernobyl reaction, Griswold McNugget, to Billy Groats, to Billy Goat Scruff. I don't know how I remember that. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Speed it up. It's I used to know every word of that. Do you guys like have songs that you'll never forget like the words to? Like if I started playing that song in here right now, I would like Leonard Bernstein, <laughs> Leonard Bernstein. I would know like every word to that song. Speed it up and not speak grunt, no street, the ladder center clutter with fear, fight down, hike, wire in the fire with the city, city games and the government's fire and combat strike. Answer so what's coming in a hurry with the fear is spinning down your neck. Team by team, Look at that, no planes. Fine, then, uh-oh, uh, overflow. Some knees come to the wrong knees, speed it up and not speak, grunt, no street, the flat is clatter with fear, fight down, hi. <laughs> anyway, good old days. Ty Copernicus, Ouija board, I don't know. Anyway, I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow, bye.